Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we are looking at the BA-1. This is a very new synthesizer. It's, uh, I believe the slogan is an evolution, not an emulation. Uh, but anyways, yeah, a whole track. The only sounds in here that aren't the BA-1 are, are actually the kick and the snare. Uh, even the hi-hat is the being synthesized. Sounds like this. So, uh, and, and in here, a lot of the sounds, so there's already a great breakdown video of how this works, but essentially, you have a glissando, this is like glide between notes, two oscillators, the ability to blend between the two oscillators, you have the ability to add some FM, you've got a filter, an envelope that can control the filter, an LFO, a side chain area, which will do pumping. Um, I don't really take advantage of this uh, much in this case. And then we've got a section for effects, some distortion, tone, delay, reverb, and then a battery section, which kind of adds random like problems to the sound, which can be kind of cool, kind of a lo-fi type deal. And then finally, you've got an output in a random generation. So when I'm writing, I'm not thinking about these too much because there's already a lot of really great presets. Um, if we were to grab a new one, for example, just to look at it, and I gotta love that there is an orange for it. So they've got different colors. But the, the best one's the orange one. So, uh, yeah, so when I'm working with sounds, they've got a ton of presets already ready to go. Um, and I've spent a lot of time in different ones. I think my favorites were the Synthwave pack and just the default sounds that are in here. And then a couple of them. So a lot of these sounds will say they're from a preset, but the preset was really just the starting point and I mingled them as necessary. The most common adjustments you're gonna need are on the envelope. So for example, at the beginning here, I have these like pad sounds. So we've got our core pad sound here. This is the analog brass baby. And that distortion is what's causing all that extra sort of grit. We can get rid of that. And it just doesn't have the same vibe. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back up. And this, yeah, it's very, this knob does a lot. Like it's very, you don't need a lot to start hearing it. And then the other thing is I wanted to balance the attack so not have this really uh, ping light kind of a sound. So if we bring this down. And versus if we bring it back up to 15. We get this sort of whooshy kind of a sound. And what we're doing with this is if we take a look here, so the way I do the MIDI, because it's a little different from most DAWs, is I like to have everything that's related on a single pattern. And since this track wound up being a lot of harmonically relevant stuff, like not a lot of intense, like micro sound design things going on, most of the stuff had notes. And so I wanted, you know, my core pitches to be, you know, present so that when I'm writing out like the little chord arps and things, I could just go back and forth in the pattern. As I label chords, they just show up in a really convenient way. Uh, so I have one bus here that's kind of like a MIDI bus, but then when automation shows up, it shows up underneath that particular instrument's channel. So that's how this is kind of working. You can see I did separate out the melody at one section, uh, but this, I might've stuck this in here. I, I wrote this separate from this, which is why it just they're separated. That also explains the drums. So, in here, yeah, we've got our, our patch and we can look down here at the automation and we can see I'm actually moving the attack around to get this really nice swoosh vibe as we go through, right? Because we end up hitting our strongest point in the cadence right here. So this end's coming in. We've got it playing a lovely chord progression, but I wanted to keep things fresh and interesting. And so if we listen right here, there's actually the chords become smoother as this attack knob moves up. <laughs> Womp womp that bit right here, this guy. And you can see the cutoff is actually also moving, providing some interest to the transition. Originally I had it starting off softer, but it really just, I wanted to really grab the listener. So I wound up bringing this up a bit and then backing it off and then having it like come back up. And then right when we hit the groove, it jumps down all the way and this creates a much stronger contrast to the intro. So 
So attack jumps down, cut off jumps down. So those two things are being played with throughout. Same thing with the verb. I verb it up a ton and then verb it way back. And that's that's pretty much the manipulation of this particular preset. And it's very, very, very fast. The sound sounds great. So it's really easy to just sort of focus on writing and chords and things. You can see I've I've got some labeling going on here. No guarantee this is still this way, but most of this stuff should be pretty accurate because I, I didn't change too much throughout um, as far as like later. I didn't come back and revisit this and change a lot. So with that, we've got some pads here. Um, and the, originally there's this keypad. And that's sort of these echoes that you hear um, at the beginning. These guys right here. And this is one layer and you can see there was actually more, but I later on I added this melody uh, to try and give the intro something that would motivate another the melody further in the drop. Uh, otherwise, it sounded just kind of like, you know, where'd this melody come from? So I put that in here. So this is sort of intro, vibey kind of stuff. And then here we've actually got a melody melody. And this is actually just a clone of that sound. And all I did was bring the attack down. And I think that was it. Um, I just needed something that responded quicker. Otherwise, there's too much of a delay and you can't really play a melody. It sounds like this. This is also why the chords show up here, because now I'm thinking about you know, melody, and I, I want to make sure, like, I'm not doing weird things. Yeah, da, na, 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 na. And then there's a na, that, that boom, is actually the echo of a G on the original sound, this one. So they come together to form this sort of unison. At some point, I'll probably move them next to each other. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so that's what's going on there. And then we have this lovely, these lovely little pluck sounds uh, that are coming through. And if we were to solo this up, yeah, that's what they sound like. And all they're doing is playing the chord, arpeggiating through. Sometimes they might have a couple extensions or adds or something. And I just put that through and then I, I clone it one octave up shifted over and I wanted it to be somewhat random but very quick so I sort of wrote these in um, off the grid and then in FL Studio you can actually grab them and there's this nifty handle that allows you to like squeeze things so I could sort of control how it hit so some of these like this one I believe is like spot on the grid just shifted but some of the other ones are much more random and this is a theme I kind of kept to to just make sure nothing was ever too too perfect Maybe we got another. Yeah. Just some really nice, you know, it's a nice vibe. So let's take a look at the patch here. The patch itself is pretty straightforward. I started with this, um, I, I can't remember how to say this instrument's name, Gamela, whatever. Or I think this is an artist. The Gamelin, I believe, is the instrument. You got me, okay. But anyways, we started with this patch. And I thought it was cool. I can't remember what I changed because this is one of the first things I added to the track and it's been about nine hours. So I don't remember every single thing I changed anymore, uh, but very likely to go after some of the waveforms. And again, over here on the envelope, keeping that attack just a, a smidge off gives you those lovely little blurred effects instead of something that's like overly plucky. Uh, so that's the, that's the sound and you'll hear it in the background it actually stays throughout. Uh, but in, in this intro section, there's very little bass, or in fact, there should be no bass. And it's all just the chords building in a cadence resolving from a G sus4 to a G major. It's the only case of the G majors when this progression happens. Otherwise, they stick to a G minor or a G sus4, which is ambiguous if you leave the third out, uh, which is why it's a suspended chord. So that's what's going on through this progression. Then we hit the groove section where I do bring in the bass. We've got these two lovely bass patches. And that's the synth, by the way, that they're emulating the CSO one. I'm unfamiliar with it. Uh, I just, to me, it's just a really cool retro sounding synth. But um, it is modeled off that one. I, you can find out more on their, on their homepage, on Baby Audio's homepage. And anyways... Patch itself started out with this. I don't think I changed anything about it. I thought it was cool. Started out, just got to play some low notes here. Just get down here. You know, I'm vibing that. And then I wanted a layer. So there is another one. 
And this is to add some of those upper harmonics to the sound. Yeah, and you get, you get these sort of sounds. Now, I was heavily pumping them in the mix before. If we go to the basses, which I, I make black when they're really low, and um, there's one for the kick and the snare. So I, I chose to not use the side chain here. Um, and the main reason I did this in FL is because it's a pain to get to the side chain in a generator plugin because the I'd have to come in here and somehow figure out a way to route them to an input. Where, where are they at? They, I don't even think it's available. Um, this is the way FL does it. So since this is a generator, uh, I'd have to load it in a patcher inside an effects and then send to MIDI in order to get something like that to show up. It's just a whole fiasco. So instead, I just decided to go with this. And this is, this is just an FL Studio thing. So I was pumping these uh, quite a bit. And I wound up backing it off just a smidge um, as I went on in order to let the basses come through a little more clearly because I did spend a bunch of time on this kick snare thing. And I should also, for transparency, say I have bumped it quite a bit. Um, we are sitting around minus seven luffs. I think by the end it's closer to minus eight, but it has been boosted to high heaven. So just be aware that that's also going on on everything I'm showing you right now. Uh, because that's how I did an entire mix. Then I did like a, a brief mastering chain. And then I went back and added parts with that on the master. And so it's not a very common thing to do, I think, workflow wise. But that's how I wound up doing this. So yeah, tossing these in, we, we'd shut off all the verbs and everything. Uh, the filter depth on some of these things goes down, which causes this sucking feeling. Um, when I say sucking feeling, I mean like the verbs gone. So it sounds like the space has gotten smaller. So you can hear those doing their job. And I also have this layer I bring in, um, which is this one. Again, started off, this is in the synthwave pack. And again, just some subtle changes to attack and decay and you're off to the races. Um, you, you need to be a little bit careful. Some of the presets have the drive on and um, I tend to take that off on some of them. I don't believe this is one of them, uh, but it's usually pretty easy to hear. Um, it's one of those effects that I think on one or two sounds gets the point across, and then on the others, I try to keep them somewhat clean to make them sort of mesh a bit better. And then there's also, while I'm here, there's a speaker emulation here, which I found fascinating. I really wanted to use it, but it just did not fit very many of the things I was doing. So I wound up not using it. I, I wanted that big bright feel. Uh, it emulates a speaker versus. So it's like a band pass kind of a thing. And I, I really wanted to use it, but I just, I couldn't find a spot where it sort of made sense. So I wound up not using it. So anyways, yeah, that's coming in here, this other layer, which also provides some clarity to the middle of the stereo image. And that's, that's the patch. Uh, I really liked all the Juno patches. They were fantastic. And um, coming in here, so we've got our bases, and, and that's pretty much the core of what's going on here. On the second arrangement section, you'll notice some green notes pop up on some leads. That's I was looking for ways to make the second repeat uh, more interesting, and I spent way too long doing this. I eventually, I came up with this melody, which is the melody that you hear in the intro, but this one goes downwards uh, to transition to melody number two. Uh, but what's interesting is there is a counter melody um, written into the harmony itself. And I went ahead and made these notes green just so I could keep track of where it is. If we were to solo it up here, um, let's just solo this, this thing up and play it in the corner. And then the melody starts doing other things that if I kept this going, it just sort of got in the way. But it's one of those things that originally this was intended to be like the thing going on here. And it just it didn't fit what I needed to have happening. So now it's in the background just as sort of a, if you hear it, it's cool. But if you don't, it's not the main thing. The main thing became this sound, um, which is this lead layer. I started off at this preset, might be the same, I don't even remember anymore. Uh, but a lot of these were, are like, pre all of them were preset based at some points. I actually think it sounds pretty dope high as well. 
I wound up going low because uh, the high is a little piercing and I already had a high note hit over here and this would be like my high focal point into this layer and if I did the same shape because this is actually like the same melody it just goes down instead um, the reason I want this contrasting motion is because I'm going to bring in a new melody and we can see there's a little bit here where the kick uh, comes in and I want to have this pickup note into this be really clear and easy and if this if this suddenly peaks and hits a high point, it really takes away from this. And I want to save that for over here when we you know go out to uh, return to an original theme, uh, which is this. I have this sort of theme of this up and down motion. Let me find an example here, like do do na na na, like ba 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 ba. ba. There's this constant this motion is like a motif throughout the whole thing so that's what's going on there but uh yeah so it comes in it, it does its thing this is the patch um you know sounds really nice i really like it so that's coming in here and then over here at the melody we have these three layers coming on and these have been panned differently in the mix there are, these are these guys right here and <laughs> So those are coming in. Um, nice thing about pushing them to the side is they don't have to fight too much with the kick in the center. Um, I think there was one that I did. Uh, yeah, I did do some stereo placement things to try and get things to play a little nice. And there's also some spaced out on some of these. Um, however, this spaced out really isn't doing that much. Originally, I had some delay stuff, but the delays got in the way. And I just sort of went, you know what? I I'm going to stay with you. Just the regular old sound. So this is here sort of as an artifact now. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so that's coming through on our melody. So the only difference here on this one is do i voice change i don't voice change but i add a harmony section on several of the lines oh here we go we've got some differences here you'll hear it when we get there it's uh it's near the end here <laughs> to have a progression into a new section so of course there's some filter movements opening and things uh, i originally wanted this to clamp down but it just it, the, the momentum didn't translate so i i wound up making it high so that this merged a bit better <laughs> I really like I've, this is my favorite part of the track. Um, I like I'm listening to get to this section. Um, wh what's nice is I've established a melody over here and it's, it's gone through and it's played it with these chords, but I adapt it and it actually already fits. It's very little needs to change to make it fit with this new section. Um, so, so similar rhythms and things. But what's great about this is it actually plays into this resolution like beautifully, even though this is, it's kind of strange too, because these are like E flats and a, a D is going on right here. Uh, but I just kind of like get away with it from like melodic, I don't know what to call it, but I, I d it doesn't sound bad to me. So I'm leaving it in there. Uh, but yeah, it resolves down to the D and that's right when the chord, right? We go from this, this C to a B and you know, it's not like playing into the progression directly, but it just fits in a way that's just so satisfying. Uh, so I was really stoked to have that in there. And then that dives into the next section. We drop out the bass. 
uh, drums come in to fill in some sense of bass so this sense of movement happens again. And then I filter those out right here with this filter and then the piece ends. So that's the track. Um, yeah, so it ends that way. And then I, I decided to have this outro on the tonic note uh, because it sounded weird just ending it on that like unresolved chord. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't handle it. So yeah. <laughs> So that's the piece. It's called Stepping Into the Portal. Um, and that's the synth, the BA-1. A fantastic synth. Uh, I think it really excels at Synthwave in particular. Um, and there are several other demos on the official site if you want to check those out that also sound really great. Uh, but yeah, if you're going for that retro classic vibe, um, CPU hit is fantastic. It sounds great. It's really easy to, to just work right out the box. And most presets... Some of the names in here too, like we have Venus Theory and Pegboard Nerds. I'm just like, oh man, that's, I did not expect to see Pegboard Nerds there. So that was pretty cool actually to see that. And uh, yeah, the presets just sound great. Just as starting points, they're very easy to manipulate. And there's not like, you know, this thing's made to be very tonal. So it'll work great if you're thinking of, of melodies and chords and things. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.